USA, USA, USA. USA. Guys, I'm so excited to announce me and my best buddy Dean are going back on tour and we're going to the land of the free, the home of the brave, the place of <laughs> America, are you doing okay? Seems like you guys could use a laugh. Well, this November, these two idiots are coming to your country and we're going to be saying things like poop jokes and don't forget about pee jokes and everybody's favorite jizz jokes. Aww. Jokes so stupid, you're going to go fucking crazy. So if you live in Chicago, Indianapolis, Cincinnati, Columbus, Nashville, Tampa, and Orlando, go to jacobsharp.com or deanhebsher.com and just come, just come to the shows. It's There's new jokes, we got new bits, and it's gonna be really good. Sir, yes, sir! Jacob and Dean get their own tour, USA tour. You can trust me, guys. I'm just some working class American. I ain't no Canadian lib cuck. I ain't no snowflake from the north. You can trust me. Okay, come to the shows. Dean and I love you, bye. So I'm sure you're all wondering how I got here. I'm sure you're all wondering why I look like this. Well, it's because after this journey, this three-month journey of figuring out what generation is more cringe than the other, I discovered that the only cringe one was me, Jacob Sharp. I'm so derp. I'm not, I'm not adulting. I'm definitely not epic pizza. I'm not even epic bacon mode. I'm just, I'm just hashtag cringe. And I'm giving up because cringe is a disease. Cringe is the worst disease I've ever had. Was it worth it, Jacob? Was this series worth ruining your life? Were you really being ironic when you did Awkward Turtle? Or were you the Awkward Turtle all along? You're nothing. You're just another cringe millennial. No one cares how self-aware you are. No one cares at all. But aren't we all awkward? Aren't we all random at one point in our life? <laughs> Is this what you wanted, God? <laughs> is is this what you all wanted? You like this? Do you like watching me destroy myself? Just so I can say, oh, I did a thing. Fuck it. Who cares? I love myself for being cringe. I don't care. I am who I am. And I am a cringe millennial. There is a cringe millennial inside all of us. And the one thing I know is you either love your cringe or die trying. What's up, guys? Hey, how are you? And welcome back to a totally normal YouTube video. Bruh. Let's just say this video is winning what? and today's video's not sus. It's a doozy uh, Picks or it didn't happen what? Right, let's just say there's nuggets in here nuggets and nuggets and nuggets and nuggets and nuggets uh, Don't talk to me until I've had my morning nuggets <laughs> Guys this one is gonna be goals AF yeet by Felicia oh, Another one I am so weird. Jeez. I am looking pale, 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 pale.
Hey guys, so over the past three months, I've been on this cringe millennial journey, and this is my third and final installment of the series. Three videos in three months. God. <laughs> Jesus Christ, my motivation sucks. But hey, welcome to my cringe millennial finale. And I'm really starting to realize that millennials aren't as bad as we think. I mean, we suck. We suck bad. We are the live, laugh, love mosquito sucking on the arm of generational culture. But what I've really taken away from making these videos, that millennials show the other generations not to take themselves so seriously. That Joker quote is also such a millennial thing. Uh, Batman, you complete me. <laughs> My father was a drinker and a fiend. <laughs> yeah, R.I.P. Heath. Why so serious? We are truly the poster child of cringy generations. But you know, millennials have shown the world their goofy side and we're not ashamed of it. I think we do win the gold medal for being the most annoying young people. And I think we're totally fine with it as long as other generations recognize their downfalls. Dude, boomers, baby boomers. <laughs> We don't understand the young generation. Good. Die. Youch. The silent generation. Shut up. The golden generation? More like the molden generation. I'm in the golden generation. I bought my house for five cents. Good luck fixing the world. Fucking Gen X with their white Oakleys, Capri pants, and text font all the way up to like a thousand. Fucking Gen Z, Gen Alpha. What do you think about that? Grow up already. The Renaissance era, weird generation. People walking around saying stuff like, uh, I hath doneth a thing, my lord. Uh, thou hath adulted. To be sorry or not to be sorry. Oh, how I long for a maiden to Netflix and chill with. You know who's the most cringe? Fucking God, God himself, Mr. God. He's the one who made us in his image. God's probably up in heaven right now wearing some fucking YOLO hat and a shirt that says, keep calm and repent on, while he probably humble brags about winning office trivia. God's cringe. You don't like cringe millennials? Blame God, blame organized religion. So to send this series off and to finally ask the question, are millennials cringe? I interviewed two of my friends who are millennial Gen Z cuspers, Anna Marie and Gabby. Then I also interviewed my best buddy, Dean, and I had to interview the king of cringe himself, my good pal, Jordan. Don't forget to go check out their YouTube channels. They're like right here. So guys, enjoy the video. Said no one ever. And guys, before the interviews start, while editing Jordan's interview, I made the decision that I'm gonna have to release his interview as its own video or maybe podcast because we talked for two hours and it's a super funny, silly conversation. And we didn't exactly answer any of the questions, but just to give you guys a taste of what that interview was like, here's just like a minute of us going back and forth with cringe millennial stuff. Oh, they're also embarrassing. And then Hunter Biden is completely disassociated himself with the family and instead just has a huge cock and does crack. Yeah, have you even heard of Karl Marx? <laughs> Yeah, I read, what is it called? Theory. Um, yeah, I guess you could say I write with my left hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It appears that I do in fact know Kung Fu. <laughs> uh, remind me to never take the blue pill again. <laughs> um, remind me not to say anything. Check, please. Let's just say I said nothing at all. <laughs> you can't say anything. Oh, these days with uh, Hunter Biden's America woke. All you can do is smoke crack and get a huge boater, dude. A huge <laughs> twang. <laughs> Have a huge hog and smoke <laughs> crack. Divorce is now swag, as they'd say. <laughs> Alrighty, gang. Welcome my next guest, Gabby Bell. Gabby Balls reporting for duty. Thank you, Miss Balls. Miss Balls. Starting off a little, a little cringe millennial. Oh God, no! Now that was random. That was XD random, if you ask me. Crying face emoji. <laughs> <laughs> All right, question number one, Gabby. Now this is gonna be pretty controversial for you. Are you millennial? Oh, people will fight and say that I am. I don't really identify with a lot of millennial culture, but at the same time, I'm too old to be mostly Gen Z. Got it. But in terms of humor, <laughs> I will mostly identify with the young people. 
This makes me sound very old. You sang humor and then younger? The young TikTok folks. I think you actually might be a boomer. <laughs> I'm neither. You're not there. I'm 65 years old. Yeah, you're you're a Gen Xer for sure. I am Gen X, actually. So I think I'm a cusper. Final answer. I'm 97, 1997. So yeah, we'll put you a little 50-50. We got a bunch of fucking old ass millennials in this video. I want someone who's kind of middle of the pack. Question number two, are all millennials cringe? No. No. Are all millennials cringe? Obviously no but it's still fun to make fun of them. I agree with that. I think there's also a cultural thing. People who like kind of lean into those characters or like ironically do that stuff. Yes, with good lighthearted intentions. Yes, exactly. But sometimes I catch myself doing it too much and now I'm like, oh, I think I'm back in grade 12 again. I think I'm literally making fun of someone. Uh, yeah, I'm making fun of someone and it was me like from 10 years ago. Yeah, it's yourself. But if it's yourself, like, is it, is it that bad? No, I don't think it's that bad. But I think it it's funny, though, to maybe make fun of it and then still realizing that the people who actually act that way... Th they don't get why it's funny. And they don't know that they're being made fun of, maybe. <laughs> that kind of makes it better. It is random. No, this is so true because I've met so many IRL people who are millennials who are so painfully normal and it's so cute. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Don't talk to me till I've had my coffee. Keep calm and carry on. Drive on. I love cooking with wine. Sometimes I even put it in the food. Yeah, whenever people are like, you wanna go to yoga? I always go, namaste. Oh, wow. I think I'm proving that at least I'm a cringe millennial. <laughs> but it's self-aware, it's ironic. A little bit, but sometimes people are like, you're too good at it, and it kinda hurts my feelings. Question number three, have you ever caught yourself being a cringe millennial? Or have you ever related to one? <sighs> yes, because I don't understand TikTok and I won't. I'm past the age where I am trendy on these apps and I'm okay with being on Instagram. Stick to what you know. I love the idea of getting older and being like, it's, it's, it's too loud in here. It's too busy and it's too loud. <laughs> and you know when you relate when like I've come across Instagram reels, that's another one showing my age, that are like making fun of like you getting ready in 2012. And it's just like a get ready with me from the era. And you're like, this is pretty silly. I like it. And you're like, I sure did used to wear my shirts a lot. I, I sure did wear maxi skirts that were short in the front and long in the back. And then he used a sock bun. And we all dressed like we were going to our corporate jobs in middle school. I guess for context, I have an older sister who is a millennial. She's 34. I've seen the culture growing up firsthand. You probably remember when she had MySpace. Yes. And she would take the pics like this. Yep, yep, way high, way high. I was just in the beginning of Facebook, like right when the transition was happening. Okay, do you think cringe millennials are bad people? Of course not. Like I said before, it's sometimes really adorable how cringe they are. Just like going about their normal day-to-day -day lives, doing silly things that they don't know people make fun of them for. <laughs> Awkward turtle. Okay, so not not bad people. Sometimes misinformed, sometimes misguided, but aren't we all? Do you think millennials did an adequate job with early internet culture? Brother, this guy stinks! They were doing the best they could. <laughs> It was a different time. <laughs> I think we need to give them some grace. Dude, the internet straight up didn't exist. They were the first, they were the guinea pigs. They were the first frontier. What were they supposed to do? In your opinion, will Gen Z or future generations like Gen Alpha fix the damage that millennials caused? Eventually, when they get older than 12, when they get old enough to understand that doxing people on TikTok isn't okay. I think they are causing a lot of damage, let's be real. We're too lost in the sauce in the internet for them to understand the real life implications of what they're posting, similar to what millennials experienced when they were first starting the internet. Yeah, I always thought that the like, I don't know, commenting gay on YouTube videos would stop. Come on, that was peak, peak humor. You don't understand. But it's still happening, which is crazy to me. <laughs> if anything, even now, like Gen Z should understand what real life implications that their comments are bringing, and they're still doing it anyway. Millennials were just saying what they said in their real life, but online. 
not okay either way. What's your favorite uh, cringe millennialism? Oh my gosh, there's so many. There is a lot. <laughs> How could I possibly pinpoint one? I think one's where they're trying to be deep, but it's not deep at all. It's like almost like cringe, but adorable. I'm here protecting my peace. And they like post that on their Instagram stories. You can tell like when someone's obviously like spiraling a little bit in their life and they're like finally taking some me time with like a giant margarita or some shit. Tag self care. Yeah. <laughs> Where it's almost ironic, but you're like, are you all right? We know you're having a hard time. Are you okay? Do you think millennials will ever grow up? Have boomers ever grown up? I don't think they'll grow up. I don't think we'll grow up. I don't think Gen Z will. I hope Gen Z grows up. When they do grow up, they won't grow up anymore. I think we ask people to like have the optics of being like an intelligent, like grown up human being. We are here to supply the fart jokes. I'll shit post until the day I'm in the ground. No problem. <laughs> is everything all millennials fault? What kind of a question is this? <laughs> I think a lot of them don't know how to take accountability for what they used to be like. Gen Z has at least bred a world where we can kind of be like, yeah, I was a dumbass. They think it'll like make you look bad in the public eye if you like answer to the critics. They think it's like a weakness. Do you think the way millennials handled the internet had some long lasting effects on the way society works and kind of will operate? Yes, but I don't know in what way. What we base our internet behavior on now is based on, hey, let's not do the things that they did on the internet. We're kind of taking all that and being like, let's not do that. Ever again. Yes! Oh my god! And I think that's kind of the beauty of commentary right now is that it's kind of like, remember when this was going on? That's not good. That's not very good at all. But still, on the other side, like you said earlier, not all millennials are bad people. Number 10, last question of the of the interview. Would you say this interview was random or awkward? Um, it was a little awkward turtle at times, but I think I can get past it. It's Leviosa, not Leviosar. <laughs> it's Levio, bruh. How do you feel after that? Good, I hope I was able to give some sort of perspective that isn't terrible. Because I know both people, both sides are going to be really mad at me for something. And I don't know what it is yet. I think because I have an older sister who is a millennial, I have a little bit more empathy. Not that you don't have empathy, I'm just saying like in general. I have a little more empathy to seeing how they were growing up handling the internet. Right, well I guess you have that kind of outside perspective. I think that's why you're so like, aww. Aww. <laughs> Look at you trying. Hey, like our generation ate Tide Pods. And Gen Z are doxing people on, on Twitter. But I think once we all grow past those things that we have done, we end up changing the internet just a little better. Oh, do you have any last words for uh, for millennials out there? Keep doing your best and open your heart to the new ways of the internet and Gen Z. Because sometimes you guys can be a little dense about it. <laughs> I love that. I love that, Gabby. Everyone say bye to Gabby. Bye. Subscribe to Gabby Balls. Hashtag awkward. <laughs> Hashtag Ako Taco or Awkward Turtle? We'll answer that question next time. Can I tell you something embarrassing? I have a varsity letter for my school, but it's for choir. That's, that's not embarrassing. That's the coolest thing I've ever heard. But it's like, why? Why would I wear like a $300 jacket just for that? Now, I don't want to call you out, but like having a choir, a jacket from high school for choir seems a little millennial. A bit, I fear. And I'm sorry. I mean, I still have uh, sweaters and shirts from competitive improv when I was in high school. Holy sh- competitive improv? There's like... Wow. Are you a millennial? No, I was born in 1998, so I'm definitely on the cusp, but I've experienced both millennial and Gen Z culture. Okay. Good, you, which is great. I love ha having kind of both perspectives. Instead of everybody's two wolves, one's a millennial and one's Gen Z. <laughs> uh, question number two, are all millennials cringe? Hmm. No. I think a lot of it comes from a wholesome place and you can't cringe at that. Like I'm never gonna make fun of someone for having a good time, most of the time. Yeah, I think that's nice. Most of the time. Yeah, 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 most of the time. So you see, there's like a threshold on it. You can have fun. Not too much fun. Put that guitar away. Save it for open mic night, like a normal person. Have you ever been a cringe millennial or have you ever like acted like one or related to one? Oh, 
100%. This is like the real cringe. You know those like text posts that they used to post that was like silly fact number 972? Yep. I used to copy those and put them on Facebook and act like I came up with them and all my friends and family would be like, you're so funny at 13 years old. So you were, you were basically like, uh, yeah, you were plagiarizing just like, just, just like basic, very basic, like, just like quotes and silly jokes, just, just for approval from like f friends and family. From like my aunt that I haven't seen in three years, but just make it like a text post, like the ones that would work as a text post, I would do that. So on December 26, 2012, post Christmas, I posted, Raisin cookies that look like chocolate chip cookies are the main reason why I have trust issues. Oh my God. And a family friend commented, you're too funny. <laughs> and did you, and like, did you just go like, were you just like, so like, yes. Yes. I got the affirmation I needed. This was the validation I deserve. I posted two on September 30th, 2012, if you would like to hear, and then we can move on. My first post is, it's the end of September. Can we wake up those Green Day guys yet? Uh-huh, yeah. I mean, hey, punk rock, dude, that fucking rocks. Ah. I wasn't like other girls. And then the second one, why does Facebook even give me the option to like my own status? Of course I like my status, I'm freaking hilarious. I had to say freaking, cause my mom followed me. Do you think cringe millennials are bad people? No, I think it depends what side of millennial cringe it's on. Cause some of, a lot of iFunny posts treaded the line of like, just being like edgy to like incel, red pill kind of stuff. That's a different kind of cringe than like Disney adults. Yes, ex okay, that's a great point. Do they hype up consumerism? Yeah, but it's like, that's their money if they wanna spend $10,000 on a mouse. That's not my business. Do you think that millennials did an adequate job with early internet culture? I would say so. Like they definitely are the reason why meme culture is the way it is today. Yeah, I think uh, I think we set up a lot of at least opportunity maybe for meme culture and like kind of silly side of the internet to, to grow and be like a really interesting place. I don't know. I like to think back on it as being like silly and fun and like kind of being goofy. But I think the Gen Z generation has brought a, a good sense of self-awareness to it, which has been really important. Like it's more ironic with Gen Z. Making a, making it ironic, I think, has made it made it more uh, palatable. I like how I'm like being like, like really like, yeah, this is kind of like the study I've done on. Uh, well, uh, according to my research. Yeah, things were awkward turtle, but why were they awkward turtle? <laughs> but now it's epic potato. One point that I would like to make, we talked about how like a lot of memes, especially on iFunny, were like made people go down the incel red pill pipeline. I think it was like dark in that sense, but I think a lot of Gen Z memes are dark too, but it's more directed at themselves, like self-deprecating humor. I would say the mid 2010s where it was like, oh, I just watch Netflix and eat pizza all day. I'm so lazy and I'm so depressed and stuff like that. What is your favorite cringe millennial ism? There's a lot to choose from. There is. There's a lot. In that time, there was a lot of different... We were all, like, exploding. We were all, like... We came up with a lot of really interesting stuff. Meme culture was thriving. It still is. But I feel like meme trends, like, go even faster now. Oh, it, everything's, like, so quick. And, like, I was laughing about, again, Er My Gerd. When I first saw Er My Gerd, it took up, like, a, mo like a few years of my life. Because I couldn't believe how funny it was. That was a canon event for you, seeing that meme for the first time. I definitely use the XD, ironically. My girlfriend and I both do that, just with us, because, like, we, like, recite and, like, act kind of millennial-like, just, like, for the bit. And sometimes we'll do that, and it's wholesome. It's great. In your opinion, will you do you think that Gen Z or future generations like Gen Alpha, do you think they'll fix the damage that uh, millennial culture has caused? No. I think they're going to make it worse. Oh, yeah. Because Gen Alpha, I hate to like always blame things on the pandemic, but I feel like the pandemic really fucked up the social skills of Gen Alpha, like during like developmental years when they needed to be around people. And like, obviously they needed to stay home and quarantine and stuff. I don't know. It makes me fearful of like future generations of humor, especially on the internet. I came into this thinking that the answer was gonna be like, just like across the board, yes. Cause for some reason in my heart still, I'm like, oh no, they're, they're gonna figure it out. And that might be like, even kind of like uh, me taking on like that boomer mentality of being like, no, millennials got this. They're gonna figure it out. Fingers crossed. Anna, do you think that millennials will ever grow up? 
Not because they want to, because they have to. Ooh. But that's like all of us. Yeah. Yeah. Inevitably, we just got to let it go. I have two more questions for you, Anna. First, uh, first question. Would you say this interview was random or kind of awkward? Um, I would say this interview was awesome sauce. <gasps> I know, I know. Bow, 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 bow. I actually had a pretty good time. Today was officially bruh. Okay. T-pose. Yeah. <laughs> uh, pardon me while I plank. <laughs> Can I tell you the most millennial shit I did? I did this a couple months ago. You know those big red balls in front of Target? I guess to like stop from cars driving or whatever. But like it's become like an iconic symbol. I planked on it, or at least I tried to back this spring, but I couldn't get up on top. <laughs> Were people watching? It was like nine o'clock at night, but there were definitely still people coming in and out. And I definitely embarrassed whoever I was with. And I couldn't even do it successfully. Were they embarrassed, yeah, of you doing it or were they embarrassed because you couldn't complete the plank? Yes, and. Remind me to never plank at Target again. Plank at Target, they said. It'll be fun, they said. <laughs> <laughs> I the they said, wow. I still see tweets like that to this day. For any uh, cringe millennials watching or anyone who kind of is still dealing with this uh, unironically maybe uh, any millennials out there do you have any advice for them or any final words to all the millennials watching i see you i hear you i respect you Bruh. thank you for what you've done wow Hell yeah, dude. Hell yeah. Also, thanks for doing this, buddy. This was a blast. This was super funny. I wouldn't want to dab with anyone else. Like this video, they said. Subscribe to the channel, they said. Uh, thanks so much, Anna Marie. Thank you for having me. This was a lot of fun. You're the best. You're the best. You do know I'm mostly tumor, right? This does not feel amazeballs. No. I've heard of boomer humor, but ever ever had of a, a boomer tumor? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, we forgot to whip. And welcome my next guest, Dean Hebsher. Say hi, Dean. Hey, what's going on everybody? <laughs> I just, I just needed to be unlikable right off the bat. Yeah, I like that it was two different things. You took big, a big draw out of a fucking geek bar and then went, hi, everybody. Like a, di a different guy right away. A guy, a guy who was late, but ready. Inside of you are two wolves. One of them vapes. <laughs> yeah. yeah, one of them hauls. Uh, alrighty. So question number one, Dean, are you a millennial? I, th I guess, yeah. Yeah. I, I'm born in 1995. Yeah, you're right on the tail the tail end. Are all millennials cringe? No, not all of them. But some of them? 100% some of them. I think that uh, a lot of millennials who are trying not to be cringe just end up eating their own tail pretty much. Got it. Trying not to be cringe ends up being pretty cringe. Have you ever been a cringe millennial? Or have you at least related to one? I have for sure been a cringe millennial. I, thank you for being honest. I have, yeah, because I can't lie. Like, I've been mad at, at younger people before. I actually was like, these damn kids. <laughs> I've actually done that. I've actually been like, what the fuck is wrong with them? But, you know, like, when we, you know, remember when we were younger and we were as loud as we wanted to be on, like, a bus? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, now, what runs through my head often, like, if I go for a walk, like, and I go to the mall or something, what happens a lot uh, inside my head is have some fucking respect <laughs> i actually do that and then i'm like you flow man so you're not even being a cringe millennial you're just like being like you're just being an older curmudgeon who hates the younger generation like an an angry cringe millennial though who hates the younger yeah, generation yeah. being like this dang generation it, they are not random they are so awkward okay between this time and this time i won't be caught here <laughs> Remind me to never hang out with Gen Z again. What are your favorite uh, cringe millennial isms? And uh, what are ones that you are like guilty of doing yourself? Uh, I, I've always been a big fan. <laughs> I've always been a big fan of like that just happened and stuff like that. You know what I mean? Because we use them quite ironically. 
Yeah. I mean, I'm damned if they are not useful. There's <laughs> even 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 that right yeah, there. That, that. And I'd be damned if they're not useful. And I'd be damned if they're not <laughs> fucking useful for when something just happens. I think just stuff that we say that we've heard our dad say. Oh yeah. Like 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 uh like what? Like give me If I walk by a building that's been under construction forever and it's getting it's getting up there, I'll actually be like, Well that thing really shot up. Wow. <laughs> yeah. You've almost adopted like a cringe boomer thing. I used to just tweet at basketball players. Uh, what would you tweet at basketball players? I'd be like, have a great game tonight at DeMar DeRozan. <laughs> all the time. Like all, all, all the time. Do you think cringe millennials are bad people? I think it can be harmful. Yeah. Okay. Obviously the bad ones. Those are the types of people who want to stay in their own like mental lane. They don't have time to be open-minded. They don't have time to learn about new things and understand new things and, you know, appreciate different perspectives and all that shit. Right. So I think that if you're just, in, if you're just like locked in your own brain, yeah, that is damaging. And I think that's why cringe millennials can suck sometimes. And do you think that people, uh, a lot of millennials kind of fall back into like those sensibilities or that sense of humor? Uh, as a safety net. Yeah, because it's because it's easy. It's surface level. It's not too deep. And I think uh, every generation does that. Obviously, like you, uh, you have what you think are the golden years, and you have what you yeah. uh, you only have what you remember and experience. But when things are new, you get cagey, and you can definitely get a little more yeah uh, a visceral reaction just because you're like well no this is what i like and this is what i remember and that was the good stuff right everyone puts their nostalgia filter on do you think millennials will ever grow up yeah definitely <laughs> thanks for doing this buddy <laughs> no problem uh you feel good feel a little less cringe feel epic Bruh. uh <laughs> now that, that was, was epic, epic lol cats, lol cats. <laughs> <laughs> That was lame as fuck. Do it one more time. One more time. One more time. Uh, um, now that, that was, was epic, epic lolcat. <laughs> Alrighty, guys. That's the end of the video and the end of this series. So I think we answered the question. Yeah. 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 Millennials are super cringe. We are the cringiest, but so are you. You know what's pretty cringe? The human race. You want to know how I know? Because I can read. Chapter one. Bruh. And before I get to the ending of the grand finale, I just wanted to thank everyone who's helped me out with this series. Thank you, Danny, Curtis, Saji, Trin, Anna Marie, Gabby, Dean, Jordan. Uh, thanks to my editor, Blue, for helping me out with a lot of these. Thanks to my friend, Jill, for helping me film a lot of this. And thanks to you. Thanks for being epic, guys. So let's send this series off with a banger. I think I gotta, I'm gonna retire soon.